right, let's talk about regime change. And the basic argument I'm going to make here, as will become clear as we go along, is there's really no difference, of, no meaningful difference between George W. Bush and Barack Obama. Their foreign policies in the region are very similar. What we want to do is we want to talk about the targets for regime change, and then we want to talk about the record, America's record, how well we've done the job. All right. Four, five big targets, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Egypt. All five of these abject failures. Let me lay out the story. Afghanistan, September 11th, 2001, the United States is attacked by Al-Qaeda. Al -Qaeda's physically located at the time in Afghanistan. So the United States in mid-October 2001 goes to war against Afghanistan. In particular, we go to war against the Taliban. We topple the Taliban relatively quickly. By late November, early December 2011, uh, the Taliban is toppled and we have put in place a new government uh, under Karzai. And uh, you know, things ultimately don't work out very well. The United States today is still at war in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is the longest war in American history. Just think about that. Afghanistan is the longest war in American history. Barack Obama said that when he left the presidency, all of the troops would be out of Afghanistan. All the troops will not be out of Afghanistan. My guess is that they'll leave about 10,000 American troops in Afghanistan when he leaves office uh, this coming January. The United States has spent roughly $113 billion in Afghanistan, which is more money when you control for inflation than the United States spent on the Marshall Plan in Western Europe in the early stages of the Cold War. Think about that. We have spent more money on Afghanistan than we spent in the Marshall Plan in the late 1940s. And what do we have to show for it? I told you, first of all, the war is ongoing. Second of all, the Taliban has come back from the dead. We did not decisively defeat the Taliban. It was a temporary defeat. The Taliban has come back from the dead. You understand the Taliban, according to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, now controls roughly one third of Afghanistan. Do you believe that? Taliban controls roughly one-third of Afghanistan. And the reason we're keeping troops there is that if we take those American troops out, the Taliban will end up controlling even more of Afghanistan. And by the way, they're going to end up controlling more of Afghanistan anyway. And furthermore, you know who else is in Afghanistan these days? ISIS. ISIS is becoming a meaningful force in Afghanistan. This is disastrous for the United States. We have basically lost the war. We're just unwilling to admit it. And we're trying to kick the can down the road. That's effectively what Obama's doing. He doesn't want to be the one that they can point to and say, he lost the war in Afghanistan. So he's going to keep a small number of troops there so that Hillary Clinton will be blamed for losing Afghanistan. But we're going to lose. After having spent an enormous sum of money and fought this war for a longer period than any other war in American history. Then there's Iraq. We did a great job in Iraq, right? The country's basically broken up into three parts now. That was certainly not our intention. Uh, and oh, by the way, what did we get as a result of the war in Iraq? ISIS. You understand, there was no terrorism when Saddam Hussein was in trouble. Terrorists knew what would happen to them if they were operating in, Af in Iraq, right? The Iron Fist had come down on them. So there's no problem with terrorists. We broke the country up into effectively three parts, and we ended up with ISIS. 
uh, I would estimate, very hard to get good numbers, but I would estimate that at least 500,000 Iraqis died as a result of the American campaign in Iraq. Uh, so not only do you have a country that's broken, 500,000 Iraqis are dead. By the way, just talking about Iraq and Afghanistan, estimates are that it will ultimately cost the United States somewhere between four to six trillion dollars for those two wars. Uh, almost 7,000 Americans dead. Many, many more Americans badly wounded as a result. And what's the end result? We lost both wars. Then there's Syria which is probably the biggest mess of all. Uh, the United States, of course, played a key role there. We did not invade Syria, but uh, we have been deeply involved in uh, trying to bring Assad down since uh, 2005. Uh, the Bush administration had its gun sights on Syria for a long time. Um, I believe that we helped precipitate uh, the uh, revolution against Assad in 2011. And uh, we have been funding the jihadis. Uh, we sometimes refer to them as moderate forces arrayed against Assad. But we've been trying to bring the regime down from the beginning. Uh, you know, the regime first got into serious trouble in March 2011. That's when the Arab Spring was beginning to pick up speed. and. Barack Obama said in August 2011 that uh, Assad had to go. And then in early 2005, we began to move to commit money and resources to helping make that a reality. So we've been working hard to bring Assad down. We've been fueling that civil war. What's the end result? The end result is that probably about 400,000 Syrians have died in a country of 23 million people. 11 million people have been forced to leave their homes. Of those 11 million, 4 million have left the country. Some are in Turkey, some are in Jordan, and many are in Europe. The refugee crisis in Europe is in large part, not exclusively, but in large part a function of this conflict. And seven million people are internally displaced. So think about this, you have a country of 23 million people, roughly 400,000 people are dead, seven million people are internally displaced, four million people have left the country, the amount of death and destruction is mind-boggling. You've seen what's happening in Aleppo. And there's no end in sight. And you want to understand that the United States was interested from the beginning in regime change here. Then there's Libya, where the United States and its Western allies played a key role in helping to bring down Colonel Gaddafi. And Colonel Gaddafi, of course, was eventually killed. What's the end result? chaos in Libya. I just want to back up a second here. You understand what the American goal was. The American goal was regime change. The American goal was to get rid of leaders like Saddam, leaders like Colonel Gaddafi, and replace them with democratically elected governments on the assumption that you would then have a stable and prosperous political system in place. We were not just bringing down regimes with the thought in mind that we were going to sow chaos and disorder. That's what's happened, of course. This is my basic point here, that the United States has failed at almost every turn. We thought we were going to do good. I want to be very clear here. People like George W. Bush were not trying to wreck these countries on purpose. They inadvertently ended up wrecking these countries because regime change was a harebrained scheme. That's the basic point. We have failed at almost every turn. And by the way, for those of you who talk about international law, the United States is very big at pointing the finger at other countries and saying, you violated international law. What we did in Libya, what we're doing in Syria, is a violation of international law. 
We're violating the sovereignty of these countries. We have no UN resolution that gave us permission to do regime change in Libya or gives us permission to do regime change in Syria. The United States just decided it had the right and the responsibility and the ability to get rid of Assad. We're very big into social engineering. That's what regime change is all about. And of course, the end result in Libya is that it is a country that is now housing large numbers of terrorists and causing all sorts of problems for the United States and the Europeans with regard to dealing with the terrorism problem. So if you look at what happened in Libya, you look at what happened in Syria, you look at what happened in Iraq, you look at what happened in Afghanistan, it's really quite amazing at the extent to which the United States failed to achieve its basic goals. Finally, there's Egypt. And here the story is somewhat different, although the basic end result is not that different. The United States was interested in promoting democracy uh, in all of these countries, and that includes Egypt. And when Hosni Mubarak, who was a dictator, uh, was removed from power uh, in Egypt, and the United States helped give him a gentle push uh, out of office, uh, there was great hope that democracy would actually be put in place in Egypt. Uh, there was an election, actually, in Egypt in June 2012. And the problem was, from the American perspective, the Muslim Brotherhood won. So you got regime change, and you got a democratically elected leader, but he was from the Muslim Brotherhood. And this was not good from an American perspective. But nevertheless, the Americans, much to their credit, did nothing about it. The leader remained in place, Morsi, for about one year. And what happened was all sorts of dissent began to emerge in Egypt. And there was a movement to topple Morsi, to have a coup against Morsi. Because most people in the Egyptian establishment were unhappy with a Muslim Brotherhood leader running the country. So what happened was there was a coup in July of 2013. Now remember what happened here. Mubarak is overthrown in early 2011. Then you have an election in June of 2012, right? And Morsi, the leader, Mohammed Morsi, the Muslim Brotherhood leader takes office. And then a year later, in July 2013, you have a coup. The United States went along with the coup. The United States was not the principal cause of the coup. And I've tried to go to great lengths here to say that the United States is not the only force at play in the region. And that's certainly the case with Egypt. But you had a coup in July 2013. And Morsi was removed from power. And who took his place? A general, a thug, a dictator. So no democracy in Egypt. And by the way, he then went out and took vengeance against the Muslim Brotherhood. And roughly 1,400 members of the Muslim Brotherhood were murdered in the wake of the coup. And you ended up with a non-democratic leader. And result, another example of failure. So basically, you had five big operations that were all designed to produce regime change, which would lead to a democratic and prosperous political order in each of those five countries. And what's the end result? Zero for five. 